In order to hire the right person, you gotta be the right person. And by right, I mean you gotta be coming from a very specific mindset. Wanna know what it is? Hey, I'm Adrian Kaler and I'm a leadership coach to company founders, entrepreneurs, and corporate execs, and welcome to Naked Leadership. Here's the challenge, and I hear it from my clients all the time, that when they wanna scale leadership, how do you find the right person? How do you know if they are the right person? How do you bring them on in such a way that it's gonna work? I've got five filters that you can employ to make sure that you set up the right conversation to get the right talent in the right way so that it works. So the first filter is to make sure that you have the right opportunity. I'm in a conversation with my clients all the time where they're hiring someone to actually solve an issue, but usually it's their personal issue, like they're really busy, they're really tired of dealing with this certain thing, then maybe they wanna get focused so they wanna to give other things away. So actually hire for relief. I want you to think about the right opportunity. Like what problem are they solving or what future are they creating? Think about it like this, is that if I hire this person and they're really successful, what are the results they're gonna be generating a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? You wanna set that up in the conversation early to see if they wanna actually go create what you need them to create. So the first filter, have the right opportunity. So the second filter is to be patient. Hey founders, be patient, I know. I know, it's a pain in the ass. Here's why I want you to be patient, is that usually, whenever you jump into the process, you're so fed up that you're looking for a quick solution. Quick solutions have lots of problems attached to them. So I want you to slow yourself down, realize it's gonna take probably twice as long as you would want it to be, and just be okay with that at the very beginning. It's gonna take twice as long. And then when you find the right person, you wanna generate some tension in the process. Don't rush them through the interview process or what you have set up. Slow it down, create some tension. You wanna make sure that actually they have the character, they have the resilience, they have the willingness to stick in. They might be looking for a quick solution as well. They might be in this scarce spot, like I need to go find my next opportunity. You don't wanna be the emotional solution to their dilemma. You actually want alignment around vision. So take your time, more time than you wanna take. Trust me, it's worth it. You should build the tension because chaos reveals character. So if there's tension in the conversation where it's not an immediate yes, an immediate, oh, I love these person, and then you kind of follow that confirmation bias, let the thing get a little bit tough. See where they really are. Especially when you get to the finances, you gotta see, do they actually care about your side? Do, are they gonna play hardball? You want them to play hardball. I mean, it's a pain in the ass because you have to pay them more money, but that's the type of person you want. So slow down, create the tension. I don't know if this is right for me. I don't know if it's right for you. What's your family think about this? Do you really wanna do it this way? Do you wanna work, you know? Generate all those conversations. A lot of people want to go really quickly to solve their problem instead of creating the right relationship that sets up the best future. So if you've operated in filter number two, generate the tension and you're okay with that, then you're gonna to get to number three, which is be meticulous. So be meticulous. What do I mean by that? Is that as you go through a process, everybody's wanting relief. You want to hire a person as quickly as possible. They wanna get hired as quickly as possible. And then a lot of times because of that urgency and because of maybe just the pure passion, you wanna move things quickly and you're gonna see some signs. You're gonna have little, little yellow flags pop up in a conversation. Like when you ask a question and their answer is a little bit sideways or you can tell they're not telling you the whole story, you're gonna naturally want to avoid that. I'm saying slow down, be meticulous, ask the question that you don't want to ask. Go explore what might not work about the situation. Remember that how you start something is usually how the thing ends. So if they understand that you actually care about the details of their performance, you care about the details of their life, you care about the details of their history, you care about the details and how they see the future. If you care about the details now, they're gonna be much more apt to being accountable down the road. So slow down, be meticulous, get this part right. Filter number four is vet for attitude, not just competency. It's natural to look where everybody looks, which is a resume, history, experience. They've probably got a whole bunch of skills, a whole bunch of experience, and you're naturally gonna hire that. That's wonderful. That's also a foolish game. Like if you do that by itself, you need to vet for attitude as well. How do they view themselves? How do they actually view their history? Are you slowing down and noticing their relationship to their history? They've probably got, naturally, a handful of stories about the old boss or the old team or the old opportunity. And maybe they're saying why it didn't work and the reason it didn't work was outside of them. You're gonna to want to notice their attitude. Responsibility is an attitude. How much ownership do they have is an attitude. However their attitude is now, this is their best behavior, is going to be multiplied into the future and it's probably gonna get worse over time. So you wanna pay attention to how they're relating to things and how honest are they? Meaning, like they could be really optimistic, naturally, really optimistic and that feels really good. This person's forward leaning, this is gonna work out. And are they also honest about when things aren't working? Do they analyze pitfalls? Are they willing to really account for what's not working and how much of a challenge it's going to be? So attitude matters. Attitude is the container in which 
competency really flourishes. So you want to pay attention to that. So filter number five is be generous. Now I don't mean just on the, on the pay scale. There's plenty of conversation around if you pay well, you're going to get better talent. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about for you and your attitude as you walk into the whole thing is how generous are you going to be? And here's one way to test your generosity. How honest are you about yourself, about the workplace, about the team, about the future? How honest are you? Do you share from a real place about your own leadership. How, hey, th when I'm on, here's what it looks like when I'm on. When I'm off, here's what it looks like. When I think about myself and where I need to grow, here's actually where I'm growing right now. And let me tell you about how I blew it last week. Like those types of confessions, which is really like honesty, actually pulls somebody close because everybody needs that environment for themselves. So if you wanna generate a growth mindset with your team, you better be practicing a growth mindset yourself. So be generous with them. Have the real conversations. There's things they wanna talk about and don't know if it's okay to talk about with you, but you set the table with your own honesty. So be generous, it's gonna pay off. So if you're willing to use these filters, here's the great news, is that every time you bring somebody new on, it's a fresh chapter for the current team. So if there's things on your team right now that aren't working and you actually hire someone in, in a fresh way, it's naturally a turning of the page. You can start fresh and new. So it's gonna set the new bar for you. And this is why it's worth it, is that they actually the quality of the experience of work is found in the interpersonal dynamics of the people working together. So relationships are always what matter most. How you're doing this is gonna set yourself up for success in the future and set your team up for the whole next level of ownership, connection, and performance. Thanks for watching, and if this has created value for you, please like and subscribe, and remember, your people are counting on you.